how can you make life a little bit easier for yourself um, going into tonight offensively? Getting stops. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, that, that's where it will, it will definitely start for us, Mike. You know, um, no disrespect to Portland, but when we got to that second round, it was night and day. Uh, you know, we, we scored very easily in that first round and we were able to beat a team without a starting backcourt, you know, which really happens. In that second round against a very good top 10 offense, top 10 defense, the inability or how hard it was for us to score consistently really made it hard for us. So tonight, uh, if we can get stops and get out and run, I thought we did a really good job in the preseason of running more. Our transition points per game, our fast break points per game were increased. Uh, and that has to come from our defense. Uh, so if we're able to get stops and gain rebound, then get out and run and score some easy ones before they can get set and implement the game plan they have uh, for us. Coach, can you talk about opening on the road as opposed to opening at home? Um, well, we're on the road. So, <laughs> uh, um, so instead of ball arena, we're at what's this called now? The footprint center. So it's no longer talking stick. No, no, no. yeah. We'll it's footprint. All right, footprint. So now we're at footprint. Um, the big thing, Chris, obviously, is your fans having that support of your fans. Um, you know, I give these fans credit in this area. You know, we played here in those two games. I wish we could play more than two games here, but uh, this was a loud place, very, very tough place to play. Uh, tremendous home court advantage. Uh, so that's what you miss. And we'll have that on Friday night against San Antonio, our home opener. But uh, I think that's the biggest thing is just us against everybody. It has to be a just us mentality. Uh, and you know, you're not just playing against the Phoenix Sun, but you also have the fans. People throwing stuff at me. That's going to make, make it really hard, a very tough place to play. Michael, you, you joke about, you, know, you made the comment about DeAndre's extension. But I wonder, as a coach, so now on the other side, you know, Monty certainly is going to try to make sure that his locker room is in a good place and talk to the big fellow about his situation. Have you learned along the way how to massage those kinds of dynamics? Like with you, MPJ, you know, Michael. Yeah, and if I'm Monty, I'm blaming the, the GM and the, and the front office. <laughs> and, you know, I, I told him to sign you. I told him to give you all the money you wanted. Um, but yeah, it, it's it's a delicate balance, man. It's none of my business what goes on in their locker room. Sure. It really is. But but in general, I think yeah, you, you have to find ways to uh, because it's impossible to keep everybody happy all the time. Right. You know, well, one of my sayings that I, I heard a long time ago that I love: if I wanted to keep people happy, I'd sell ice cream for a living. Sure. In this business, it's impossible to keep seventeen players happy, and you don't really try to. You know, it's not my job is to keep people happy; it's to win games. Right. And, you know, from afar, they need DeAndre Ayton to win games. They got to the finals last year with him as a starting center. So Monty is great. I worked with him. He has unbelievable uh, relationship skills, communication skills, and I'm sure he's talking to DeAndre, and it won't be a distraction. You know I mean, I, I think they understand that they got really close to winning a championship last year, and Monty and Chris Paul and Devin Booker are all telling him, hey, you can't worry about that now. What you can worry about is making us the best team possible. Uh, but in general, Sam, I, I think as, as a head coach, you're constantly communicating, um, massaging egos, trying to get guys to buy in, see a big picture, whatever it is, because when that jump ball goes off, you want everybody focused on the task at hand, and that is winning the game. Anyone else in here? Go ahead, uh, the Zoom, Stephen. Hey, Coach, we're going to start with Leonardo Torres. Hi, Coach. It's Leonardo Torres from Peru. Hope you're well. Coach, what will be Facundo Campasso's role this season? You know, it's going to be the same as it was last year. You know, uh, as, a, as a, a player to start the season coming off the bench uh, when he comes into the game, uh, bring that passion and energy and pace uh, to the game with him pushing the basketball, with him making plays for his teammates, uh, and then defensively just being that pest that constant nuisance, the guy that is in your face. Uh, and, and that's where our defense starts is on the ball. Uh, and when Faku does those things, he has a tremendous impact on our ball club. And we expect him to be even better than he was last season. All right, coach, take one more. We'll go to Joel Rush. Hey, coach, uh, do you already have a bench rotation kind of set for tonight? Or is that something that will more emerge from the flow of the game? No, I'm just going to wing it. You know, I'm just going to figure it out on the fly and kind of see what I'm feeling and, and go with the flow. Uh, no, we, we have an idea of what we want to do, Joel. Um, obviously, you can't play everybody. It's, it's impossible to play 
17 players. Um, so tough decisions are made. You communicate with guys, you get them to understand where you're coming from, why those decisions are being made. And you make sure that guys understand the importance of staying ready, staying engaged, uh, because in this business, things change quickly. And if guys are not mentally engaged and ready, then they will not be able to fully take advantage of any possibilities, uh, opportunities that arise. So, uh, yeah, we have an idea of what will go, but each game will take on its own personality and we will adjust accordingly. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, Coach. Appreciate it. Appreciate it.